Hello everyone, I am sure you are familiar with Lunchables. If not, they are super popular to bring as a school lunch. The most common one was crackers, cheese, and meat. Since then, this generation has upgraded to charcuterie boards, what I like to call the adult Lunchable. On these boards, it is common to find foods such as cheese and bread. They tend to be paired with beers or wines. What do all these foods have in common? All these foods use biotechnology during production. This is one of the oldest techniques used in biotechnology. In this presentation, I will briefly discuss their unique processes and how they are created. Let's first review what biotechnology is. Biotechnology is the use of living organisms in industrial, agricultural, medical, and other technological applications. In this case, it is used in food production for our ever-growing population. Beer, wine, cheeses, yogurt, and breads all depend on this method, specifically fermentation. Fermentation is an anaerobic biological reaction which relies on bacteria and small microbes, and in many cases, they depend on yeast. There is over 8,000 different strands of yeast that all have their unique types of reactions. Because of this, you can produce various kinds of each product that all have their distinct qualities. The first process we'll be looking at is the production of beer. Records show that the brewing of beer started about 6,000 years ago by Sumerians. It is believed they accidentally discovered the beer making process when grains would get wet and left out for days. Today there is a more scientific approach to beer making. It is a process by a combination of grains, yeast, and bacteria, and is known as an enzymatic process. The type of grain, yeast, and bacteria you use change the flavor, color, and texture of the end result. For example, using Saccharomyces cerevisiae will create an ale, and using Saccharomyces ovarium will create a lager. Since this is an enzymatic process, common enzymes used during this process are acetose lactate, decarboxylase, and amyloglucosidase. In wine production, there is a similar process that occurs, but usually involves using fruit since it has a higher concentration of sugars compared to grains. Normally, we see wines being created from grapes. Wine brewery is estimated to have begun about 4,500 years ago. A common yeast that is used in winemaking is Saccharomyces ellipsodius. Again, the mashed fruits and microbes are combined. The yeast or bacteria release ethanol and carbon dioxide, which produces the unique wine-like taste. Cheese making is different than alcohol production. Instead of using alcohol fermentation, cheese uses lactate fermentation. Cheese production began about 7,000 years ago when humans started to cultivate livestock in order to preserve the milk they were getting from them. One specific step unique to cheese making is separating the milk into solid curds in a liquid way. The main microbe used in cheese production is bacteria. Common bacteria are lactococci, lactobacilli, and streptococci. The bacteria is added and converted the milk sugars into lactic acid. In some cases, enzymes are added, but are usually produced by the bacteria. These chemical reactions play a large role in the flavor of the cheese. Yogurt production is estimated to have started about 4,000 years ago. In yogurt making, the milk is heated, which kills the undesirable bacteria and denature the liquid whey, instantly setting together rather than forming curds like in the cheese production. The mixture is then cooled and bacteria is added by law Lactobacillus bulgarius and Streptococcus thermophilus are needed in yogurt. This mixture is then left to ferment where the bacteria cultures convert the lactose into lactic acid, giving that familiar acid taste. Yogurt is commonly known to be a great pro source of live probiotics to support a healthy gut. Fun fact, red wines and sourdough bread also have this ability, but lower traces of live cultures. Bread, specifically sourdough, is believed to have started about 3,600 years ago. In sourdough bread making, both bacteria and yeast are used. Common bacteria used are Lactobacillus San Francisco, Lactobacillus fermentum, Lactobacillus plantarum, and Lactobacillus bursum. The common yeast used are Candia marilea, Saccharomyces exesus, Saccharomyces roxii, and Saccharomyces cerevisiae.
There is another kind of yeast called baker yeast, which is a genetically modified organism. It is commonly used in today's era to support the mass production of bread. Enzymes are also used in bread making, specifically the amylase, protease, lipogenes, hemicellulase, and even lactase. During the fermentation process, these beneficial microbes break down sugars and starches into alcohols and acids, making food more nutritious and preserving it so people can store it for longer periods of time without it spoiling. In some cases, fermented products can provide enzymes necessary for digestion. Without fermentations, all these foods would not exist the way they do today. Fermentation has helped support our growing population. It has a major role all over the world as it brings people together for social and ceremonial celebrations. The future of fermentation is vital. The human population is approaching 8 billion people and without it, many of these foods would not exist to the public. Although I only spoke about fermentation, this industry has a strong tie between genetically modified organisms. There is a lot of talk about GMOs in today's society. Through my research, I found that many of the grains, wheats, and fruits used for beer, wine, and breads are typically GMOs. In recent years, the talk about genetically modified yeast strands and bacteria strands for these products are growing. There is still a debate on this, and as it is new, but this idea would undoubtedly change the future of this whole empire. Because of this, these products would be produced much faster in higher quantities, and the output would all be uniform.